Hey guys, Mike from Boyer Bows. Okay, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something I'm I'm doing right now. I'm making like Dr. Frankenstein these days and trying some new stuff out. First of all, I want to talk about bow backings. Uh, and here may be a way to save you guys some money. Because Lord knows, my most popular videos is how to make a longbow, high performance longbow for under 10 bucks. So here's a way to get some backing material. If you don't want to use fiberglass, uh, there's some natural products you can use. I love sinew, and I am now falling head over heels in love with something else called rawhide. And uh, let me show you. This is this is usually when you order rawhide through from an archery department. What you're going to get are two strips of rawhide. They're this is a, a pair of strips that I actually traded online for, but if you buy them, you're going to get something very similar to this. They're going to be 36 inches long, uh, 2 inches wide, maybe a little more, and what you're going to get out of it is, and they're going to be of good quality. Uh, hopefully you're getting it from a decent vendor, so you're going to get a decent quality product, but I was eyeballing something at the pet store. I, there was this giant dog bone made of rawhide, and uh, I remembered when I was a kid, my my dogs would drop those rawhide bones in the pool, or the yeah the pool, and wait for them to soften up, and then they'd take them out and, and basically just eat them. And uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but I bought myself one of those giant. I mean the biggest rawhide dog bone I could find. And as far as I know, rawhide is rawhide. I don't know if one is better than the other. I don't know if it has to be specially prepared. But here's what I got out of this. I want you to see this. This is the main bone. The main rawhide bone after I stuck it in a cooler full of water for a couple hours. I un if you if you guys know what that rawhide bone looks like, it looks like somebody took it, rolled it lengthwise, and then tied a knot in each end. And this is when I unrolled it, lay it out flat. It's still wet, which is why it's on the it's on the cardboard. These pieces over here, they're 36 inches long each. By in in this case, they're about three inches wide. When you order them, the norm normally they're about two inches wide. So what do you get out of that? Well, if you're making a mulgabet, one strip, you remember our working limbs are the only thing, uh, the working limbs were 14 inches if I remember correctly, uh, the high performance longbow for under $10, 14 inches, you cut that in half, you have two 18 inch pieces of, strip, uh, of rawhide, so basically you get two mulgabets out of that, but if you're making a longbow, your limbs are going to be, these strips aren't long enough to do more than one bow. You're going to get one long bow or two mulgabets out of it. Or two Lakota bows out of it, or from, from my videos, you know. But, this piece, okay, it's 8 inches wide. It's 50 inches long. Now, and I just, just let's look at the thickness here. The thickness on this piece of rawhide back it up just a little bit. It's a nice thick piece of rawhide. Let's look at the thickness here. I don't know if you can... I'm going to try to make this so you can see it. But look how thick that is. I like that. That's going to be some good backing material. I hope it doesn't slow the bow down too much. And that might thin out a little bit when it dries. That might just be... it might just be kind of a sponge right now. But I bet you it's going to be at least that thick. Now negatives. Well, first of all, it, you know, the people making this are not trying to avoid holes. They're just making a dog bone. They're not necessarily making high quality backing material. So there was a couple of holes in it. I Maybe it was the luck of the draw, but this hole, this big hole here, I'm not worried about this tiny one here. That means nothing to me. But this big one here, from here to the end here, 36 inches. How perfect is that? Still got eight inches wide worth of uh, of rawhide. If you go by the two inch 
uh, you know, what you'd normally get, the two inches, eight. I got four strips here, technically. Now, not only that, but there was rawhide inside the dog bone. They filled it up with scrap. Here's one of the scraps. Let's look at this. Now, not the most attractive thing in the world. Guys, this is 22 inches long, 4 inches wide. Think about that. Now, I can't back a longbow with that, or I guess I could, maybe I could, but that's definite mulgabet length. At least one limb, or two skinny limbs, skinnier limbs. If I wanted to make a 2-inch two, two wide working limb, remember there was about 14 or 16 inches, something like that? Well, I've got 22 inches worth of rawhide here. At four inches wide, I got the whole bow. I mean, I got I got four strips here for a long bow. More if it's mulgabet. I've got at least one mulgabet bow here, and then I've got a I got a gallon Ziploc bag full of about four by four inch, approximately dog treats that I'm going to give to my brother. My brother's got a beautiful little dog, uh, English Springer Spaniel be a great hunting dog if he hunted. He doesn't hunt, but it'd be, boy, would it be, that'd be a great retrieving dog. Oh my God, she just wants to retrieve everything. Uh, Matt, if you're watching, Coco's going to get some treats. Uh, Coco's Christmas comes a little early, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think this is a, uh, oh, and by the way, guys, the reason I'm pointing this out, you buy these two pieces online, something like that online, that's $26 before shipping and tax and everything like that. This amalgamation was $14.99. This bone at one of the major pet stores. I can't remember if it was Petco or PetSmart, but it was one of those two. And it was $14.99. Like obviously, there was some tax on it, but I don't remember how much. But comparatively speaking, I saved over ten dollars and I'm gonna be able to back two to three times the number of bows with this than I would with the uh, more expensive stuff now I am gonna test it guys we're gonna do the test I'll post the results online I'll post the how to apply the rawhide and the whether or not it works if the bow blows up in my face I want you guys to see that I don't know I've never used this stuff before um, you know if it's not the same stuff as you're getting online I'm going to find out. I'm also not going to back good bow wood with this. I'm going to back some really bad bow wood with this. I'm going to torture test it. I'm going to put it on some beautiful wood. The wood I'm thinking is Babinga. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wood. Not the world's best bow wood. Okay? The reason I'm going to do it is I want to see how resilient this stuff is. If this stuff can keep a piece of Babinga intact, It'll definitely keep a piece of hickory, Osage, Ash, Yew, all the other real bow woods, no problem. All right, guys, quick video. Hope this saves you some money. Before you go out and buy it, stay tuned for the future torture test and results. I'll be talking to you later. This is Mike from Boyer Bows.